Uh, my name is Nash uh, Plani Swami. Uh, I'm the VP and General Manager for uh, Artificial Intelligence and High Performance Computing Solutions and Sales at uh, Intel. I'm very lucky to be doing what I'm doing. AI and high performance computing, high performance infrastructure is used pretty much in everything that we touch every day in our lives. From medicines, to cars, to the planes that you fly in. People have a lot of questions on what is high performance computing? What is high performance infrastructure? What is the difference between my laptop and a big server? Essentially, a high performance computing infrastructure is a computing system that solves a complex problem. It could be several computers tied together to solve one problem. It could be one computer with a large amount of memory or a highly performing processor or highly performing accelerators to solve a complex problem. So where do you invest in HPC infrastructure? The different things that you need to think about are, is it getting 100% utilization? What is the return on investment? Let me give you an example. When you look at the oil and gas drilling needs to go and find oil, the HPC infrastructure there, the return on investment is huge because the cost of drilling in the wrong spot is huge and it's much, much greater than compared to the actual uh, systems that you're investing in. There are other cases where you're not going to get that big a return on investment. So you need to make sure that HPC infrastructure that you've bought can be used for other diverse workloads. So sometimes you can use the workloads overnight to do some simulations, and in the daytime you can use it for something else. And then the question of accelerators come into play. We are in the middle of a pandemic. We have really gone full speed to go figure out what the shape of the virus is, what happens if there are mutations. Let me give you an example. A few years ago, right, there was a new technology called cryo-EM. Cryo-EM was a new technique which was invented. Basically, you took the sample of the virus, right, and you froze them cryogenically, and then you use electron beams to get data. Once you got this data, you could create a 3D model of the, of the virus, okay? So cryo-EM technology was one of the key technologies which were used to create the shape of the coronavirus. And with that, they found a lot of things, right? For example, they found out that the spike protein had a little shadow, a little cloak around it, and that helped shield it from our immune system. So they used that to go figure out how to build the best vaccine, right? So HPC has really helped speed up some of this vaccine development, speed up understanding of, of the virus, and, and really improve and give us a better chance of fighting this virus. Artificial intelligence is broken up into like two parts in my mind. One is machine learning, analytics, the well-known part we've been doing for years, uh, XG Boost, uh, Spark. And the second one is the one that is upcoming in the last, you know, eight, nine years, which is deep learning neural networks, where you're trying to replicate the human brain the way that the human thinks. Both of them need high performance infrastructure, the AI machine learning as well as the AI deep learning. So in effect, AI is another HPC application, which is running on a high performing infrastructure. And that's why you'll see that several of the AI deployments are on HPC infrastructure that is used for HPC applications. So the same infrastructure that can be used for oil exploration, for example, is a great infrastructure to use for AI uh, deep learning training. So in effect, AI is a HPC application running on high-performing infrastructure. When it comes to AI deep learning, especially with the neural networks-based approach today, the cloud service providers 
and the digital services providers, first party applications. Well established, the ROI is very clear in terms of natural language processing or image processing, computer vision. However, when it comes to the enterprise, either private sector or public sector, there are lots of POCs which are happening today to figure out how deep learning can help the business. It is a market ready to take off. So I'm really excited to see how artificial intelligence, deep learning neural networks will be deployed in the enterprise in a large scale, similar to high performance computing or AI in digital services and cloud service providers. And the key is for all the CIOs out there, you know, you have to have a growth mindset and keep an open mind because these types of technologies will bring benefit and you just have to keep trying to make sure you find the right application which gives the right ROI for your business. I want to give you an example of what would have been like impossible if not for the cloud. This is an example with Amazon. We used AI in the cloud to solve a major problem for the people of India. Blindness due to diabetes is a big issue, especially in India, at Shankara Eye Foundation, where the eye photos were sent back to the cloud and high performance computing applications and AI work together to figure out if there's a problem and the problem needs to be addressed with the eye. Blindness due to diabetes is a big issue, especially in India. I'm from India and I'm diabetic and I have to check myself to make sure my eyes are fine on a regular basis. Let's talk about the future. I'm going to break it down into the short term future and the longer future. So let's talk about the next two years, including this year. From an AI standpoint, you're going to be seeing a lot of AI accelerators moving from a testing phase into a deployment phase, especially for folks who need to have dedicated AI training. Intel has got a solution called Habana. We're going to be offering it through uh, Amazon Web Services and uh, you'll be able to use the Habana instances for training. Now let's talk about high performance computing. The age of exascale is coming very close to us. Next year, Intel and Argon will have our exascale system based on our Ponemecure GPUs and Sapphire Rapid Xeon processors, plus the Deos file system using Optane technology. Lots of new technologies coming up. So high performance computing is moving to another level with exascale computing. You'll see several extra class of systems in the next few years. And the types of research that our scientists will be able to do is going to go a huge X factor. The types of uh, medicines that we can create, the types of materials that we can create, uh, the types of scientific results that we'll discover is going to be humongous. The rest now is Nash's crystal ball. Okay. Neuromorphic computing excites me a lot. It's a solution which can do both uh, training and inference in the same solution, just like the human brain and the human being, is exciting. I just can't imagine the types of applications that will enable in the edge. I'm really looking forward to neuromorphic computing becoming a reality. The next big technology people talk about a lot, which excites me also, is quantum computing. And quantum computing is not going to come and be available and it's not going to run an operating system and a cell phone. Like quantum computing is uh, you know, very targeted to uh, you know, those types of applications which need a large exploration space to arrive at a solution. Typically high performance computing type of applications. The types of materials that you can actually find with quantum computing uh, and with the computing that it can offer, I can't even imagine. That future is exciting. I'm really looking forward to my 13 year old son and seven year old daughter to be using quantum computing in the future, in the far future. 
and making a difference to every person on this planet.